when you were served by the officer or something, do you know what officer served you and gave you my name? Uh, it would be at the courthouse. It would be the court. The, it would be on my document through the courthouse for the uh, transcriber. And you what? I mean? What did he say? The, the the server or whatever, the process server. So that name would be at the courthouse. Oh. He's the one that serves at the courthouse. He's the oh, one that serves the people. Was he a young man or was he an older gentleman? Older gentleman. That's he, he flies a plane. Yeah, his name is George. Yeah, he flies a Cessna. Yeah, yeah. White Cessna. Oh, that's beautiful. He had, he had told me your number because I, when he uh, served me, process served me, I come out and I said I'm a disabled veteran and that all those things that are going on, I've been trying to stop and I've been trying to take care of everything and being disabled, it's not like you can really do everything and I try to take on the world as one person and I, I can't do it. And, well, the moral to this is that I got my name on a reverse mortgage, and I've been trying to get it out of the reverse mortgage and get it put into my name, and it's, there seems like so many things that's coming around or going about that, that I'm having confusion with everything that's trying to go on, and they're trying to evict me from my place, and like he said, technically you can't evict a disabled veteran. Right, right. There you go. You're protected under the Soldiers and Sailors Act. The what? Soldiers and Sailors Act. Yeah. And so what I'll do, um, do you know when they... Well, I, yeah, I'm losing reception. Do you know when the hearing is? Uh, the, the hearing had already been passed and the uh, court quote the... Uh, I got all, hold on, let me get the paperwork out of my pocket. Uh, I'll give you all, all the information that I know. Give me one second. Okay. How's the weather where you're at? Cold. I'm south of you about, I don't know, about four hours probably. Really? For Detroit? Mm hmm yeah. Back home? Yep. Huh. Pretty close. Yeah, we love George. Yeah. We've had, see, with what I do is we indict them and um, for perpetrating yeah. crimes against people. And poor George, his son has been picked up, I don't know how many times, just for process serving, you know. And, and um, it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, life is. Life is that way. It is. All right. In order of eviction to the state of Michigan, 79th uh, Court, Buddington. My case number is 12-13424-LP. 12-134. Can you read that number again? One. The case number is 12 uh -huh. Four two four. Four. And it's followed by two initials L P. Yeah. Is that in district court? Uh yes. Yeah, that's magistrate. And uh it's the landlord kind of land contract or whatever. Right. Order of eviction. Right. When are you supposed to be out? Okay. And I'm not out because I was, you know what my dad told me? He said, you, you want them to take this farm, they'll give you one last thing. You want to die in this farm, get your gun and shoot yourself in front of them, and then you live your life. Whether uh, or not you lived after that, the moral is your life was served, and if you get an attack by the government and they're making you unhappy, you'll be die happy. No. I don't want to do that. No, absolutely not. And, and, uh. The moral is that's what my father told me. If the worst case scenario, you want to live your happy life and end your life that way, and you want to die in that farm, you want to live on that farm, that's the way to do it. And friggin', I took care of my father till he died. Mm -hmm. I got out of the service and I went on my own and I had, I was disabled and I went to the VA and they denied me and I took care of my own self 
and my mom helped take care of me and friends took care of me to get over the post-traumatic stress and then I went and I, I asked the VA again and they denied me. Four years they denied me and I went up there trying to get their service and trying to get help to get better to become a better person and they denied me every time. And then they finally accepted me and said, you can come in, we'll see you, come on in the big screen TV and have a hot dog. And they didn't want to see me, they wanted me to enter the win a big screen TV. And I haven't had, you still there? Yes. And uh, I haven't had the chance to even do anything with my property to combine my property to have it all as one property parcel and not five parcels and my taxes instead of being five different parcels and the one parcel and it's like all these things that I'm trying to do and everyone that was because I'm 31 years old and I'm I'm trying to ask my mom to help me because I've never had my first home I've never owned property so I had my property and my dad died and then everything I'm trying to transition and I, you know what I mean when someone asks when a child asks for guidance and every organization that he's looking up to pushes him down and kicks him around what what does he do I know when but... he fought for our country and then he goes to the VA and says look I'm hurt and I, I want to be better and they deny him and they push him aside for years I know and the man struggles but it, be better, become a better person than to be a father. I know, but you're, you're already a good person. And what's going on is that we were all smoothed into thinking that this place is a country. The United States of America is a style, it's a word or a chain of events created by Congress and the League of Nations. This is how they take advantage of us. They raise us, they have us being patriotic to this thing. And it, it, we're not supposed to be patriotic to it. And you're learning this now, so don't let it hurt you. Uh-oh, hung up. He said he cut out. I don't think he hung up on me, but he'll call me back. Okay, so it wasn't random, random law enforcement. It was George. Okay. Okay, are you... Um, yeah. Yeah, I lost reception. Yeah. But the... the Not family. <laughs> yeah. The, the country that we thought we were living in does not exist. It never existed. It was created by Congress at the Articles of Confederation. And what happened was they took over as the League of Nations and taught us to be patriotic to them. But the thing is, is that there's nothing here. They've been using us, all of us, especially us against each other and um, to our detriment to generate revenue for them and them only. The, the, the IRS generates revenue to the original 13 colonies. Um, the court system generates revenue to the original 13 colonies. The medical industry generates revenue to the original 13 colonies. And this is known as GDP. We are the product of gross domestic product. And what's going on is that it, it takes a minute because we're so indoctrinated to be patriotic to this thing. We fight wars for this thing. We, we go and, and traumatize ourselves and we get into these situations for this thing based on patriotism. And it's so sad when you finally realize that's why there's such a high suicide rate now of, of veterans. You know, they, they're because being... they all come back and they don't, there's nothing for them and then they right. already know that that's the final... That's the only way for happiness, honestly. I know a lot of people that come back and that's the, what the alternative that they went to. I know, but you have that to realize part. that the onslaught is not human. The, the thing that's against you is principalities. Just like it says in uh, Ephesians 6, it's a principality. It's a principle. It's an ideology. And what we're fighting is these a corporate dominance. We're not fighting each other or a human thought at all that this thing is just all it is is business it, they're conducting business they've got cops going out acting as privateers they're given letter of marquee or business license to be privateers to bring you in front of courts for condemnation and sale and all of these things they're just so painful um to realize at first but once you realize you know that that it's not it's not human beings against us 
it, it is really a principality. It's a notion. It's under color of law. And we just have to indict them. We have to indict these people with their hands in the, in the pocket. And we indict them for stealing us and, and raising us. You know, and one of the most disgusting things is that when you go overseas, you're no longer a citizen or resident. And what happens is when you come back, you you automatically, you put your DD-214 in the records office. So you register that as a title. They hold the deed on that. And so part of the, my process is you do the forgiveness in executor doc, plus you go down there and you remove your DD-214 out of the recorder's office because you're not a piece of property. You're not real estate. And, and part of pulling out of the system is not being a resident. The res, the word res, R-E-S, means you're a thing to be used as product. And it's so hard to wrap our minds around initially because it, we, we, it's ass backwards to what we've been taught. Yeah. You there still? I am. I am. Wait, sure I didn't lose reception. Do you have internet uh, access? Uh, no, I, I, I try, I'm not really in the social network. I, I tried to... I didn't get a phone home phone because I figure people love you and they want to see you and they know you, they're going to come and see you, they ain't going to call you and I don't want the solicitors calling me and harassing me every day and for no reason. And I, I'm the only one in my block that gets love letters from the AT&T and SPC and DISH network every day yep. and I don't get a bill from the mail from them. Yep. That's funny. And I try to, and I try to take care of my farm, I try to take care of my wife and my family, and I have a child that's in Detroit that I haven't seen in five years, and a lot of this was from my farm, is coming I mean, to my child and to the caring and uh, being able to take care of my child and have a place for him to come home to. Right, so, a so place you're... for him to be, and I yeah. went to the friend of the court in 2008 because me and the mother weren't seeing I die, and I went to them for help, so I was able to see my child. This 2013, I am not seeing my child for one minute. Okay, well, that, that's another part of what I do. But first things first, we've got to get you secure. We've got to get this going so that we can get the baby back in your arms. There is nothing wrong with your parenting skills. There is nothing wrong with you. You are not a violent individual. You did what you had to do when you were overseas. That was on the, the directives of this fucking government that then turns around and allows your ex-wife to steal your child from you through court process. Now, these things I deal with every single day, and we will deal with this. But first things first, we've got to get you secure. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to get you uh, my audios. Do you have um, Do you have a CD player? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, this, what the, that guy told me is that... Uh, I had one week until they, he said he was going to, he said you have one week to resolve this issue or to stop the process or I come back here and I have to move you away. Okay. And that's pretty much in two, two more days and okay. after the, or two more days or three more days and I can't struggle and fight myself any more than I have already and I can't do anything that I haven't done already in contrast to what I've been trying to do and what I am doing. Meaning I take care of my fire, I wake up, I do my chores, and I try to make money to pay my bills, and then I clean and I do things on my farm to keep it in good condition, and then that's the next day. And I go through this all week, and then at the end of the week I spend time with family, and then I come back and I start my week all over, and then during the year I have all my chores and my jobs, I take, try to raise animals and maintenance, I do it all by myself, and I take care of everything that I'm doing by myself. I, all right, what? Okay, I'm going to, well, I have internet, and I know George has internet, so I'm going to call George, and I'm going to see if he's got that order, and if he has it, I'm going to have him send it to me so that I can see it, and then I'll write what I need to write. And then after that, I'm going to see if I can get George to serve it or whatever. We'll figure it out, but let me call George real quick, and then I'll, I'll try you back in just a few minutes. All right. Okay, be well. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.